Welcome to another coffee break here on my channel Firm Learning. My name is Heinrich and in this video we will talk about some key functionality when it comes to creating slides in PowerPoint. Trust some of you are familiar with some of the basics we will talk about, but it will go into some more subtle points that likely many of you won't be familiar with yet, though this will significantly speed up your production process. And the topic that I will talk about is the topic of alignment, right? And the alignment topic plays a big factor into the look and feel of a slide. So there is something like the look and feel, and this is the very first perception that people have if they look at their documents. And I hope you share the intuition that if you look at this very slide, the very first perception is negative, right? It seems unprofessional. It does not seem to be created by people who know what they're doing. And feel free to pause the video for a moment to think of what the one obvious thing is that is contributing to this perception. And I essentially already gave it away and this is alignment. And so for the completely uninitiated of you, what is alignment? Alignment describes the idea that the elements are all aligned to each other, right? So there's something like a logical grid on a slide where an element start on the same level and in addition to that are potentially also equally distributed, evenly spaced across the document. And so you see that this is not the case. To give you an example how it might look like is something like this, right? So this is an aligned version, an aligned example of this very page. And to start by covering some basics, how do you actually do this? Well, PowerPoint provides some built-in alignment functionalities. And this is what you can see in here, right? So these are definitely the buttons that you likely use most frequently while using PowerPoint. And so if you are still kind of trying to use these, these grid lines, these automatic grid lines when aligning your pages, you are definitely a beginner because this is not what you should do because it's a very slow process. And so now to cover a first tip when it comes to alignment, what likely is not very efficient is to always select the elements and then here go into these menus to shape format the menu and then select the buttons because this takes so many clicks and there are now of course also some native shortcuts in order to get here quickly. What I would recommend you though is because these are likely the buttons that you use most frequently in PowerPoint is that you set up your quick access bar here in the top left by really adding all these buttons to this quick access bar. And you can absolutely customize it by going here on this arrow and then more commands and then you can select these and put them in here. Make sure you select all commands, not just popular commands to really find all of them. Because then the benefit is, besides that of course now it's much easier to access them with the mouse, the actual benefit is that you can access that quick access bar with Alt. So if you press Alt on your keyboard, Alt and then a number, you can indeed very easily with very simple shortcuts access these tools, right? So Alt 1 for instance, now left aligns the elements, Alt 2 here in the way how I set it up because this is now the second, top aligns uh, elements and so on and so forth. Right? So this is the first tip, use the quick access bar for easy access to the alignment functionalities. And so in this spirit, let's quickly align this page. So I am now selecting these and now using the alignment functionalities that I set here to the quick access bar in order to make sure this is now all set up in a nice an effective way. So you can see that if you do this, it is rather quick. What you want to make sure is that you use both the alignment but also the distribution shortcuts that exist. And maybe you want to also top align, for instance, all of these different elements. And now, and this is tip number two, to indeed effectively distribute the elements. What do you do, right? And to potentially even illustrate that, let's say you want to use even an additional element to this page. Let's say we want to use a fourth element to this page. Now we're using shortcuts here as well in order to do just that. What do I need to do to now properly distribute them? What do I actually need to do here, right? And because of course, you might come to the conclusion that you need to select all these elements and now you maybe need to hit here this distribute vertically button. And again, I invite you to pause the video and ask yourself, what step is missing here? Why won't it work to just distribute vertically? And the reason is of course that if you do it, it looks like this. So all the elements go 
across each other, right? So this does not make sense. This is not how you want this to look like. And so the key takeaway here is there's a second super important functionality that you will use in combination with alignment a lot. And this is the grouping functionality, right? Grouping and ungrouping. You can group and ungroup. And again, you can select it here from the menu. You can potentially also add it to the quick access bar. Here the shortcuts are even more easy. So I think this is the most straightforward way to do it. So with control G, you group and with control shift G, you ungroup, right? So this is very easy to remember G for group or grouping. So you can very easily select the elements, select control G for grouping, and then you can very quickly group all those. And now if you have done that, you can select the whole thing, use the first year's reference frame, and then you make sure that it is equally spaced. Now, of course, you want to also make sure that these divider lines are all left aligned as well. And now you have a nicely aligned version of the page. So this is tip number two, grouping. You always need to use grouping in combination with alignment to get to these results in a very effective way. When creating slides for your slide presentation in any fast-paced career, it is always important that your documents meet highest professional standards. And the alignment part is definitely a key part of that, but there are other things that matter as well. And during my time in consulting at McKinsey, I developed a slide checklist that I use to make sure that all my documents indeed meet highest professional standards. And today I'm offering this checklist for you as a free download. Feel free to have a look at the video description to download and access this resource. You will also see a link in the comments. Hope this is helpful. Let's now talk about tip number three. And this is a tip I see many people struggle with. And to motivate that, let's move to an empty PowerPoint template. So this is a template I created by just opening a new blank PowerPoint file. And there's a key issue, a key problem if you work like this, because now if you insert a text box, and let's just copy this over just for demonstration purposes to the other file that we just had in here. If I just paste the text box in here, let's try to replicate a text box like we have in here, right? So I copy just the content in here. And now I put it to the same font size, which is 15 and the text type should be Arial, right? And if I do this and I even space it in the same way, so now these should be the same spacing. So if I now actually delete this element here, right? Where I took it from. And now I move it in here, right? I align it here top. What is the problem now? What is the issue with this? And I hope you recognize this. The issue is that this is now not aligned, right? If you compare these bullets with this bullet here, this bullet, this text box with the bullets here, they are starting absolutely left aligned here to this column header element, to this detail column header element. Though if I move this one up, you can see that the bullets start much further to the right, right? And this is due to how PowerPoint as a default configures its text boxes, which is a huge pain, right? And you need to absolutely fix this if you want to properly work with PowerPoint alignment functionalities. And you can do that by actually here going to the context menu. So right click, format shape, then this menu options and this menu opens. And then if you go here to text box, you can see that actually PowerPoint by default adds margins to your text boxes. Right? And you need to take those out. You need to take out those margins because these margins are not accounted for in the alignment, right? It includes these margins and then it does not work. And you can see that if I now take out these margins, it is properly aligned. And there's a little other PowerPoint hack I want to teach you because in order to avoid needing to do that every single time, and I can only hope that your corporate template or whatever template you use is already pre-configured with this, if you now set up the text box in the way that you want. You can right click on the text box and now you can hit this option, set as default text box. And if you do that, if you now create a new text box, you will see that it is already configured in the right way. Now here in this example, it directly starts with a bullet point because this is how this text box was set up and you can directly see that there's no margin added to this text box, right? So this is also how you can overwrite potential settings of your template. So getting rid of margins in text boxes, a key tool, otherwise you just won't be able to align your documents at all. You just won't be able to use the PowerPoint functionalities with regard to alignment. 
So first, make use of the quick access bar for easy access to alignment. Second, make sure that you actually use grouping in combination with all the alignment functions. And three, make sure your text boxes are set up in the right way. If you took any value from this, please destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe. And let me know in the comments if you have any other tips on working with alignment functionality in PowerPoint. Thanks to all the channel members. My name is Heinrich and looking forward to be back here with you very soon.